Welcome back to our five-part series on generational marketing. I'm Rick Jones of Fishbait Marketing and Engagement Partners. In episode one, we looked at the mature generation, those born between uh, or before 1945. And then in episode two, we looked at my generation, the baby boomers who were born between 1946 and 1964. Today, we're going to discuss that generation known as Generation X. Those are those in the population who were born between 1965 and 1976. You know, we previously said that the mature generation's defining idea was duty, and their tagline was, we earned it, and that my generation, the baby boomers, defining ideal was individuality, and our tagline was, we deserve it. (laughs) Well, for Generation Xers, their defining idea is diversity, and their tagline is, we need it. (laughs) This generation was born and grew up um, post what we call the, the seismic changes in our society, the women's rights and the civil rights movements of the 1960s. This generation went to public schools after the elimination of segregation. And so they went to integrated schools. And so they always were a part of a diverse generation. Uh, This generation grew up in many cases with moms working. They worked out of the home where previous generations, very few mothers actually did so. And so you see With all these changes in society, this group really grew up in an era of diversity. Uh, They grew up uh, in the era of cable television and the resulting fragmentation of what we call the media marketplace. Remember, we said before that at one time there were only three networks that pretty much covered everybody that watched television, and now you've got a number of cable networks, and so you're beginning to... uh, Uh, to have much bigger fragmented audiences. Um, We mentioned favorite TV shows for the previous generations. For this generation, really the two that exemplified this generation were Seinfeld and Friends. And really, what were both of those shows about? Well, the truth is they were really about the family you choose. Your friends became maybe even more important than your family. Um, This generation chose their friends because in many cases, their own families were somewhat dysfunctional. Uh, You had high divorce rates or you had two income households leading to what we call latchkey kids. Many of these Gen Xers, when they were children, they came home from school to empty houses and they learned to fend for themselves until their moms or dads actually got home. Music was popular, obviously, for this group. A great example would be the the group R.E.M. out of Athens, Georgia, who became a very popular band for this generation. Now, this generation is the smallest in numbers in terms of how many there are. After that record-setting population boom of the post-World War II era, the baby boomers, Fewer children were born after 1964 as families began to get significantly smaller. This generation is now poised to take on leadership positions in both politics and business as they are in their prime earning years because they're now ages between 43 and 54. Now, we talked about how the boomers basically saw the world as black and white. We talked about baby boomers that they could get enough information. They felt like they could come up with a, you know, a black or white or a right or wrong answer, but not for Generation X because they knew the world was never black and white. It was always shades of gray. And so you found that while many older audiences were kind of shocked and dismayed when Bill Clinton had an affair with Monica Lewinsky, not so much Gen Xers, because they could actually separate and accept the president's two separate lives, his personal life and his professional life. So where do Gen Xers fit today? Well, firstly, let's talk about what they're concerned about. They are continuously concerned 
about work-life balance. They, they saw that only, the, only rats lived in the rat race, and they wanted no part of that from early ages. Uh, they now have or are going through a process of sending their children to college with all those financial implications. This generation, when they send their kids to college or have sent their kids to college, college was extremely expensive. And so in many cases, they're left with a significant amount of debt or their children may be left with that debt. They're now going to have to make a decision this summer with coronavirus about whether to send their son or daughter back to college or do they stay home and take online classes? Or what if this generation had lost their job? In a two-income family, if one's lost their job, there may not be enough money to send their son or daughter back to the campus at all. Um, and so this generation that may still have students in high school, they've got to say, is it safe for them to play high school sports or be in the band or be in a play at their high school? So safety is really now top of mind for this generation. You also know that many of this generation still have parents that are alive. And so they're worried about their parents' safety. And so they're kind of getting it from both ends. Long term, they're also wondering if they're going to run out of money. Uh, will there be any left in the Social Security system or will the baby boomers completely drain all of that money? They also are beginning to wonder if those same baby boomers will ever retire and get out of the way and actually let this generation run the country. And with this coronavirus, the answer may be, unfortunately, no. This generation has always depended on advice from their peer group over any other types of influences and still today enjoy peer group activities and peer group advice. Many of this generation are now on the verge of becoming empty nesters for the first time in a long time and both and may both have the time and money to pursue new activities and new adventures. When their kids get out of college, they may actually get a pay raise, at least in terms of their disposable income. But here's the bad news. With the economic realities of the coronavirus, their children may get out of school and be forced to move back home with mom and dad, back home for a long period of time, eating up a lot of that so-called disposable income. And so this generation is getting squeezed on both ends, both from their parents and their children alike. And unfortunately, it may not get a lot better in the short term. This continues to be a two generation, a two income generation, though, with lots of financial um, and relationships pressures. Uh, because of their small numbers, this is often referred to as the forgotten generation. So where are there opportunities for this group? This group is still a candidate for retirement products. A lot of people are telling them, hey, it's not too late to save. They're also candidates for more home improvements, like maybe converting a kid's bedroom into a workout room. They're also candidates maybe for an automobile upgrade or maybe a candidate for unique trips and experiences. They're also great candidates to start talking about long-term charitable legacy opportunities. Because they may be small in number, they're significant in impact. We'll see you next week when we talk about the largest and most important group out there, the Millennials.